Pod Studios. This is Talkin' Rock. Talkin' Rock. Your backstage pass to some of your favorite rock artists. Here's your host, Meltdown. New week, another podcast for you guys here today. Before we get into Bumblefoot, uh, I have another great guitar player that just uh, reached out to me. So I'm going to talk with uh, him uh, later on today. Also got the guys from Saliva, Brad and Bobby. As uh, they're out on tour right now, they're dropping new music and all sorts of stuff. We'll talk with them coming up here uh, this week as well before I go on vacation for next week. But uh, first, The Art of Anarchy. That's the uh, project, of course, with uh, Bumblefoot. John Moyer uh, was in the band uh, for a time. He's not going to be returning for this uh, incarnation. Uh, The band started out with Scott Weiland on vocals, then went to Scott Stapp, and now they got Jeff Scott Soto. So I don't know if there's a Scott thing going on, but uh, Bumblefoot talks about uh, his relationship with uh, uh, Jay. SS, and of course, he's worked with a bunch of projects with him. How did the band get back together, the writing process, uh, all that kind of stuff? He's got a crazy story about guitarist John Votto and his uh, sickness, kind of bringing this music uh, back to life. What this original vilified song and video means to him and the rest of the band. So lots of stuff to get to with Bumblefoot today on Talking Rock. You can also watch this on my page at WRAF.com slash Meltdown. Recording in progress. My friend, how are you? Good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Is that your uh, is that your famous double neck behind you? It is where right here, yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Yep. This is the one I record everything and do everything with. Yeah. Including that that new Art of Anarchy song. Yeah, a lot of Art of Anarchy songs. We'll talk about that here in a second. But yeah, I remember uh, the first time I met you, I got a picture with you. I mean, I met you for mere moments and you let me hold that guitar. Yeah. Some nice guitars, a whole lot of guitar. Got him. So, uh, hey, first of all, thanks for your uh, thanks for your help with the uh, with the interview I had with uh, Simon Phillips. I appreciate that. Uh, he's great. Love the guy. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, talk briefly about that little side project. Oh, uh, that is uh, Sons of Apollo uh, bandmate Derek Sherinian. He has you know lots of solo albums out, and he's done them with Simon on drums. The two of them together. And it was going to be the first time he was going to be playing his stuff live. So we got Rick Fiorobracci on bass, who's incredible. Uh, I played guitar, and we went out, we did a show. We uh, actually two shows in one night, and we recorded them and put out a live album of it. And then right after that, we went out to Armenia, and there's this wonderful festival out there uh, called Starmus. Uh, it's about astrophysics and music. Star astrophysics, must music. And uh, played with Brian May and Serge from System and, and just uh, Sons of Apollo played. Uh, the Derek solo project thing played and did a whole lot of playing. Uh, so you had to play with Brian May, is that right? Yeah, yeah. He's such a wonderful guy, yeah. Uh, have you ever met him before? Uh, I think we met years ago, and we've emailed over the course of, like, well over a dozen years, 15 years, something. And that was the first time actually, like, playing together. Uh, yeah, he's, he's just, he's wonderful. Now, There's nothing not to love about that guy. Right, exactly. Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, he doesn't use a guitar pick, right? Does he use a coin or something? Is that right? Oh, that's what they say. I didn't check. Okay. Got to look, but yeah. That would have been the first thing I would have looked for. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, I was going to go get some candy. You got a quarter? It's like, yeah, I'm kind of using it. I can't really. Yeah. Great, man. Good for you. That's awesome. So uh, the uh, Art of Anarchy is uh, is back. Uh, the Sons of Apollo, Art of Anarchy. You got a lot of things happening. And uh, first of all, tell us uh, get, about getting the project back together. Yeah, it's crazy how it all happened again. It was on hiatus. And then John, the guitar player, he came down with, he he got sick. 
And it wasn't COVID, it was 2019, but it wasn't COVID, it was something else where he, he was just slowly dying. Like every system of his body was slowly shutting down and doctors couldn't figure out what it was. And it took them four months to figure out, I, I forget what it was even called, but it was, and they just did like real strong therapy to, to get him back. A lot of blood stuff and a lot of hospital stuff. And as he was getting his energy back, uh, well, actually, before I even say that, while this was all happening, the only thing that would keep his mind off at all is he would just be kind of bedridden and watching movies. And he would watch the Joker movie over and over and over with his guitar in his hand, just watching the movie and almost playing along like he was playing a score to the movie and everything. And he ended up writing the parts that became the song Vilified, watching that Joker movie over and over while he was slowly dying. <laughs> and once he started getting better, uh, that started, that became the beginning of the next Start of Anarchy album. And he and his brother Vince, the drummer, they would come over every Friday uh, in the second half of 2020 when he was getting his strength back. And, and we were like the only other human beings we would see during the pandemic. And he would come over and we would just bang out a song. And we ended up doing about two albums worth of music. And during that time, Jeff uh, Soto from Sons of Apollo, he said to me more than once, he's like, you should have just gotten me to saying you, everything would have been smooth and easy. You, you know, we get along great. We get lots of work done. Everything is fine. Uh, so I told him, I said, well, we're actually... There's, there's new music in the works. And he said, I would love to do it. So I hit up John and Vince. I was like, Jeff would like to it before I could finish the sentence. He said, <laughs> yeah, they love, they've always been a big fan of Jeff and, and we all love him. So, so that was that. So he started writing to, to the music that, that was being made. And I would sit in front of the computer and just slowly work on the mixes and everything. And, and it came together. And when John Moyer uh, couldn't continue with it, so we were thinking, well, who could play bass? And Jeff said, well, my guy, Tony Dickinson, he plays with me in TSO. He plays in the Soto Band. He's fantastic. And I looked him up and saw these funny videos that he made on social media where it was like how to lose a gig in 30 seconds and I could show the price that he's getting paid and the more notes he would play to the song as it went on and on you see the price just getting lower and lower yeah it's the funniest thing I was like oh this guy is he, he's a really funny guy and just a killer player so that was it and then he laid all the bass to the album and, and we just moved forward we spoke to uh our longtime friend Dale uh, Rage Restigini, who has been our video guy since the beginning, and just a good friend. And he and I started working together. Uh, I first met him uh, in 2010. He was working with guns. And that's where we met, and we stayed friends. And I was just at his birthday party a couple of weeks ago, and, and wonderful guy. Yeah. So. Uh, he recommended the label Pavement. He knows them well, and they've done, I mean, great things with Plush, fantastic band, Plush. Uh, so we talked to them, and, and it was, that was it, yeah. So we signed with Pavement and, and just prepared for Friday to release this thing, and here we are, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, last Friday you're talking about as we record this, say you talked about it, but the record doesn't drop until uh, next year in February. But I was going to say, uh, what's the old saying? Third time's a charm, right? As far as singers are concerned, is that right? <laughs> oh, I would lay bets on that with, <laughs> with Jeff. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, we have years of working together. Uh, not just Sons of Apollo, but I've played on the solo albums. We've done little acoustic shows together and all kinds of things. And, and it's, it's good. Yeah. So uh, who did the uh, artwork? 
Oh, I am so bad with names. What is his name? Oh, if you want to give me like 10 minutes to open up my laptop and check and everything and, and that. And it's just killer. It's a killer album cover. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah, I believe it's the same guy that's been doing all the album art from the beginning. And it leads to so many possibilities of making our own comic books and our own characters and, and video games and whatever else. And we've talked about that, too. And so we'll see if this thing does well and we have the resources to do all of that. We can expand on it and just make more experiences, for lack of a better word, uh, for people that like the music to to take it a step further. Yeah. Now, uh, as far as the uh, first song is concerned, Billified, I mean, uh, you, were, you were just talking about how John was, uh, you know, laid up and he was watching the Joker. And, of course, you guys are playing in this video on on what looks to be like that stairway, right? That staircase. Yes, it was. That's the thing. The song has such a personal meaning to John, the guitar player. I mean, you know, he was truly facing, you know, death. He was like, well, this is it. Yeah. And that changes the person. Uh, that's why we put out the song first. Is it, in my opinion, it's not the strongest song to come out and hit everybody with this other ones on the album that would be. But it's such a personal, vital song, important song that started uh, this band back up and what it came from, you know, from the dude almost dying and, and just everything that he was living during that time and that's why there's all this joker themed stuff in there you know that's you know that's part of it all and we did we filmed on those the shakespeare street steps in the bronx that the joker scene was filmed on where he's doing the dance and everything yeah okay so that's that is actually the stairway then it is yeah we filmed right on there yeah it perhaps maybe it looked like it or something but that was some of the things i was thinking of when i was watching that video and then of course you um you, you've got uh, Cuba Gooding Jr.'s in the video, and I've had the pleasure to meet him before, and he's such a good dude. And then Jack Tate narrating, I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> a lot of unusual stuff with this song. Yeah, and Jeff Tate, I mean, you know, he's got that mind crime voice of, of just, he's just, you hear it, and yeah. So he was the, the perfect voice to be doing all of that, and it really just puts the icing on the cake, yeah. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, I was listening to it and, you know, look, I'm in the business of using my voice all the time. And I'm thinking to myself, I can't compete with Jeff Tate. <laughs> he's, he's got that unique voice. You hear it, you know it's him. And we're all big fans of his. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that he did it. Yeah. How did you guys end up getting Jeff and uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. on this video project? We asked. <laughs> That's it. You just reach out and ask people. And if they're interested, they'll do it. Yeah. Nice. No, that's great. Because, uh, yeah, the Cuba really he, he did a great acting job. And it tells, like, this whole story and everything in this one video. And like you said, the uh, video producer, that's kind of what he does, isn't it? Yeah. And first thing he said to me when I when I saw him, he was like, he's like, you know, anything for veterans, anything to support and awareness, anything, just anything that could help them. Uh, have better lives in any way. So, yeah. Well, this record drops uh, in February, February 16th of uh, 2024. And you said Vilified may not have been the, the, the most gung-ho song to a start, but tell us about the rest of the record. Ah, well, musically, it reminds me more of the first album, which was pretty much John and Vince unedited. And those two guys, they're really the... You know, they're, they're the, the foundation of the band. Uh, Vince, the drummer, John, the guitar player, they're twins. They're like one double brain. And they have a lot of roots in like the big four metal. And you can hear it in the riffs. A lot of the riffs you can hear, like it, it could be a Megadeth riff. It has a Metallica vibe or like things like that. They're very into that. They're into... Uh, yeah, they're, they're metal heads, old school metal heads. So you could hear that in the music. And then you have Jeff's voice. Me, what do I add? I don't know. Just a couple of wacky guitar moments. And, uh, you know, I wrote a few songs in there too. 
Well, some of the songs here, uh, Bridge of Tomorrow, uh, Blind Man's Victory, The Good, The Bad, and The Insane. That sounds interesting. Uh, Disarray, Echo Your Madness, just some of the songs on this record. Yeah, Echo and Rivals, those are more, I would say, radio friendly. Not that we try to, it's just you listen back and you say, oh, this one just seems to fit. It doesn't have 50 parts, it's not eight minutes long. And uh, one cool thing is uh, Alex Skolnick laid a guest solo as well mm. in one of the songs, uh, in the song Blind Man's Victory. Yeah. Okay. And he just killed it. Yeah. So uh, is there is there is you, you just mentioned like some of maybe the big four kind of stuff is there softer moments in it ballady moments what do you got oh yeah yeah it's not all you know just chugging metal uh, yeah like the song bridge of tomorrow is is more of a lighter I wouldn't call it a ballad but lighter yeah that, that's our our sappy one for the album uh, you, you mentioned John started kind of this 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 project here, this album actually started kind of clicking in 2019. How long has this record been finished? Well, we, from 2020 to 2021, two albums worth of music done, and Jeff pretty much wrote to all of those as well. So we do have a good two albums worth of stuff ready. Uh, when was it really finished? I guess you could say early this year. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to uh, checking that out. Let There Be Anarchy. That comes out on February 16th of uh, next year. What else you got going on in your life? Because it seems like you're always, you always got your hands in like all sorts of little, little projects. Well, I have a solo album that's been done for a month. So I just got to get the artwork done so I can move forward with it. And doing lots of cool stuff with that. Making a little video game for the first single. Uh all kinds of stuff. So, so the instrumental guitar album that I'm working on, I haven't done an instrumental album since 1995 on Shrapnel Records. So, so yeah, so I got that, which I just need to get the artwork done and figured out, and that then I can move forward with that. Uh, I've been mixing uh, this band that I, I've been producing their albums, co-producing, because they're really the geniuses behind it all. This duo, this garage rock band called the Dodies. They sound like a mixture of uh, Nirvana and Muse, Radiohead, like like melodic 90s, uh, really good, good rock stuff. And it's just two guys in the band. The singer, guitar player, is very Cobainish, and... The drummer, he plays the entire kit with just one arm while playing keys on a bass with his left hand and singing backing vocals. And they are so good. Uh, no auto-tuning, no tightening, none of that crap. Like, they just record an album where the two of them are looking at each other and playing together. And the first or second take is it. And they're just phenomenal. And this stuff is so good. So finishing up uh, the mixes on their third album which will be called Dreamism. And definitely worth checking out. They're called the Dodies, D-O-D-I-E-S. And they got some pretty funny videos, too. They have a lot of personality, uh, just naturally. Yeah, this, like, awkward funniness about them. Uh, great band. Yeah, so finishing up with them. And the last two albums were recorded out in Ireland. I have this friend, uh, Owen Johnston, that... that has this wonderful studio right in the north end of Ireland in this really just like serene, quiet spot. It's like there's more sheep than people over there. And, and it's just, he put together this fantastic studio. So it's just a great meeting place because they live in the Middle East, this band. So we just meet there and spend a couple of weeks uh, living at his big house slash studio and recording and, and just eating lots of Kerrygold butter, <laughs> which I'm always championing. It's like, it's the best butter in the world. And yeah, and that's it. Yeah. How important is it for you to uh, record and produce in, in, uh, in atmospheres like that? You know, it's not the most important thing in the world, but it really does help because... And when you're recording an album, it's, it's an experience in your life. 
It's a, a big one that you're going to remember. And if it's just this sterile thing where you're just going to, you know, the typical studio and here's the gear and then you go to the hotel and then you go back to the studio. Yeah. But to be doing it in this beautiful place where it's just so opposite of where you live and you can have all these other experiences and experience this whole other culture, you don't forget that. And it adds so much more to your life. And I told the band that when we started recording this, and this is going to be more than just recording. This is going to be a life experience. Like the people you meet and the things, just the way you live here is going to be something so different that you'll never forget. And you're always going to cherish it. And Owen definitely makes it that kind of positive, good, memorable, loving experience that you just can't wait to go back and do it again. Yeah, it's great out there. It's, uh, Wild Water Studios is in a place called Inch Island, which is an island in the middle of a lake in Ireland. And it's a wonderful spot. And I've been going there for a long time. I would go there and meet up with Owen, and I did... Uh, music camps over there and gigs and charity gigs. In fact, we did one while we were recording. There's a group out there, I Care, and they uh, have uh, like a school for, for the younger kids and they have one for adults with autism. So we did a concert to entertain them all and hang out with them all and, and have them all join on a song and sing and, and it's wonderful. Yeah. So you worked with uh, Derek on this on this project. You got Jeff Scott Soto in a band. Where's the Sons of Apollo thing land right now? Is that kind of on hiatus, or what's going on with that? Well, it's kind of like you, you cut a worm and it breaks off into other little pieces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, and uh, and you also said uh, you also mentioned um, you know uh, when the pandemic hit, like you kind of just kind of didn't want to tour anymore is, is that still kind of like in your mind or, or is, have you changed your thoughts on that i mean i'm gonna have to tour with bands that um i've worked with you know i can't not do it and hold back the band and i wouldn't want fans to think that i don't want to be there but as far as the direction of my own life and what i want to do with it i want to be producing more bands I love teaching, but definitely a lot more producing and mixing and more of the creative stuff and less of the travel stuff. I've been an absentee husband for decades, and it's unfair uh, to my own life and the people in my life. So I'm trying to travel and tour as little as I can get away with and just live for me before I'm dead. So, yeah. So oh, there's got to be a, a, a part of you, and I'm just, just fishing around here, but there's got to be a part of you that loves to uh, to travel and experience new things, like you were just talking about this place in Ireland. But plus, you get to go on stage and perform your craft in front of people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a whole lot of variables that, that all come together with it all. It's, it's the traveling and experiencing a new place, a new culture, a new food, new this, new that, meeting new people, uh, doing what you love to do. Uh, and then there's everything else. There's the stability and everything you have of being at home and waking up at the same time in the same bed and eating the food that, that's in your refrigerator and going to your gym at the same time and going to your studio and, and just, yeah, I've lacked that stability for a long time and, and missed a lot of things. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's like this bittersweet kind of thing. It's like you have all this wonderful stuff, but you're also missing a lot of normalcy and the wonderful stuff that shouldn't be discounted. It's just as wonderful, and if anything, more so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was curious if, if you would have started to, to miss it over time, but I, I, I it seems like you're, you're kind of uh, set with where you're at. So are, are people, like you're talking about producing and, and that kind of stuff, do people reach out to you like on a daily basis through socials or whatever to, to, to talk to you about their projects? Yeah, yeah. I hear from a, a lot of bands and a lot of people and... and 
Uh, there's one from the Northeast Connecticut, this young band, really talented, writing good songs. The singer is from Paris, a band uh, called Broken Roads. And let me double check because I don't trust my own brain anymore. Since COVID, it's like I think I know something and I'm remembering it in all like, the wrong pieces and everything. Uh, let me check. I, um, I just, it's right, but I just don't trust my own brain. Yeah, Broken Road. They're Broken Road. Uh, yeah, so I'm supposed to be recording them in a couple of months. Uh, really good bass player, Shannon Wilk. Uh, guitar player, Damiano Christian. Uh, really, really good guitar player, songwriter. Uh, yeah, the whole band. They're great. And I'm going to help them do what they're doing. And when I produce bands, I try not to... I try to be invisible. You know, I try to make it where all you hear is them at their best. And it's not like, oh, I could tell Ron produced that because it has this crazy guitar riff and it's not like, no, no. It is like zero about me. It is all about figuring out their personality and just bringing it forward and, and bringing out the best of it and what makes them a special, unique band. And that's what I try to do. So... I already started working with them on, on one of their songs, just talking about, you know, what could be done to make it its best, and, and so far, so good. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I'm just, just thinking outside the box here, never having recorded anything before, but you're probably trying to be the producer that you want to produce with. Um, yes and no, because I don't want... I wouldn't want a producer that would... Uh, just say, oh yeah, you just do your thing and I'll, you know, I'll tell you if it's a bad take. Like, I would, at this point at least, like, I would want to work with someone more as a collaborator that's going to bring ideas that I don't have, which is really what a band does. Like, that's why you play in a band. Like, if I'm just doing everything myself, it's going to be all my ideas and 100% of my own expressing creative crap. Uh, which is great for doing a solo album. You know, you get to do that. You know, in a band of five people, it should be 20% of each person in there, making it 100% of what that band is. And if 20% isn't enough, you go and you do a solo album, and you get to be 100%. It's like, this is the exact sounds I want it to be, and the levels, and the playing, and the this, and the that, and everything. The, everything you hear is 100% that person's spillage. Uh, so it's nice to have both. It is because on one, you get to fully be you in every single possible way. On the other hand, with a band, you get all of this stuff that's beyond what you are. That takes it to another level that you can never bring it to. So both are nice. One has something, the other doesn't. All right. Final thing here for you, Bumble. What's with the what's with the beard? It it looks a lot shorter than the last time I oh, saw. Oh, I got it tied up into a bun. No, it's still if I like take it down, and it's it's there. But what I do is I, I roll it up into like kind of this like little like if you turn me upside down, I'll look like this bouffant '60s hairstyle thing. But no, no, it's just I tie it up into a, a little ball and tuck it into itself, and, and yeah. You have, me, you have me worried there for a second. I thought, wait a second, what's going to hang on his guitar when he's playing? That's that you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, dude, uh, really great to uh, see you and talk to you again. It's been a long time. And uh, the, the new record, like I said, uh, Let There Be Anarchy drops on February 16th of 2024 from uh, Art of Anarchy. And uh, just as a uh, just as like a, a, a personal thing, maybe, you know, maybe for me, I hope that I get to uh, see you out there on tour and, and somewhere in the country uh, uh, coming up here possibly next year. I hope so. Yeah. It would be good to see. It's been a it's been a minute. It's been a minute for sure. All right, Bumble, you be well. Good luck with everything, okay? You too. Thank you so much. I love talking to that dude. Such a great guy, such a talent. Oh my god. You want to talk about somebody that can 
just uh, play the strings off a guitar. You're talking about Bumblefoot for sure. I met him for the first time, I think, back in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. He was kind of doing this solo tour, and uh, it came through the area. But here's the thing. It's like I'm a huge fan of that Guns N' Roses uh, Chinese Democracy record, which, of course, uh, Bumblefoot was on. So when I got the chance to talk to him, I jumped all over, right? And then we uh, became friends. So really good to uh, talk with uh, with Bumblefoot. Uh, always enjoy that. It's funny because I'll text him periodically. He's one of these guys, he, he, you know, like I voice text a lot, but he actually actually voice texts. Like he will send you voice messages that you can hear, and he's talking and stuff like that. It's one of his, uh, one of his cooler quirks, I guess. We all have them, right? And that's his. Anyways, got to thank uh, Bumblefoot for uh, taking the time. The Art of Anarchy drops in... Uh, February of 2024, so it's hard to say 2024, my God. Hey, check out the uh, podcast. I got some really cool guests coming up this week, all right, including, like I said before, Brad and Bobby from Saliva and another awesome guitarist. All right, I'm going to keep that one under wraps for now. Thank you for listening to Talk and Rock with Meltdown. You can help this podcast grow by giving it a five-star rating and writing a review on Apple and iTunes. Plus, feel free to subscribe and share it with your friends. Until next time, thanks for listening to Talk and Rock.